notice we have our typical setup again, and we have Al Garza and Veronica Martinez again kind of helping us. And we're going to watch Al go ahead and do a venipuncture on Veronica. And I'm sure Veronica is very excited about getting this done. And uh, notice that we have her scooted very close to the table. We have her arm in a slightly downward position. And once again, her fist under the elbow. We have already properly identified our patient. So now we're going to go ahead and assemble our equipment. One of the first things that Al is going to pick up is the multi-sample needle. And once again, notice how he's holding it with his thumb and middle finger towards the middle of the OSHA approved safety device, putting pressure against the dark green cap. Notice he's going to go to the end now of the clear cap and twist it in one direction, breaking the seal and he's going to lift the cap gently off. He's going to place the cap down and he's going to pick up his vacutainer holder. Notice that he's not going to touch the needle because the needle is again sterile. He's going to insert the vacutainer needle into the vacutainer holder and he's going to twist it slightly. He's then going to rotate it to an upward position. He's then going to pull down on the OSHA approved safety device and once again, recall that this can lift up the cap a little bit. So he's going to reach up with his thumb and middle finger and gently reseat the cap by pushing it down. He's now going to lay it down on his setup. He's then going to get everything in order that he needs. Notice that we have an extra little piece of equipment here that I'm going to bring up. And that's this little holder. This little holder or cap a lot of people would think it's just trash. I like it for the following, because if you cannot see the vein after the tourniquet is placed and after you palpate the vein, you could take this cap and gently lay it over the vein and put a little bit of pressure. That would leave a little bit of a round circle over the top portion of the vein in which you could direct your needle right into the center of the circle. And so this cap could actually be used as a marker. I happen to like that technique. Maybe some people don't, but we're just showing you some personal techniques. Notice the next thing is Al's going to do is pick up his tourniquet and he's going to place his tourniquet approximately three to four inches above the antecubital fossa. And we're going to watch here as he does it, placing his left hand under the short piece, long hand on the right piece, and he's lifting up, crossing over, and he's going to gently make a small little tuck. This tourniquet placement is going to bring the vein up and distend it so that we can palpate it and inspect the area. And notice that's what Al is doing right now, taking his index finger, gently palpating He's next going to pick up his alcohol. He's going to open it up, 70% isopropyl. He's read that label. He's going to bring the alcohol out, fold it into quarters. He's going to start in the center. And he's going to make little concentric circles from the center to the periphery. Never going from the periphery back into the center. He's now going to wave over the area, drying it carefully not to touch the area. And now he's going to pick up his vacutainer holder and his multi-sample needle. Notice he's going to put two fingers on the bottom of it and his thumb on the top, roll the rest of his fingers in. He's going to hold it horizontally now. And he's going to pull the cap off, retract it. He's going to put the cap down, invert it back up. He's now in the draw position with the bevel up. He's now going to get his two by twos and his tube close to him. He's going to retract the skin with his left hand. He is going to insert the needle into the vein at a 15 to 30 degree angle. Once the bevel has gone in, he is going to stop. He's going to pick up his tube, label down, insert the tube into the vacutainer holder using his middle and index finger on the flanges his thumb at the back of the tube. You can notice the blood now flowing in the tube. Do not remove the tube until all the blood has flowed into the tube and the tube has stopped accessioning blood. Now he is going to remove the tube. 
between his thumb and middle finger using his index and kind of lifting off. He's mixing the blood in the tube with the anticoagulants six to eight times. He's now putting the tube down. He's releasing his tourniquet, picking up his two by twos, getting close to the needle, taking his needle out at the same angle, coming down, taking his OSHA proof safety device and engaging it over the needle. He's now going to instruct Veronica to hold pressure for three to five minutes without bending her arm and putting pressure with their fingers. I either use the fingers or the thumb. At the end of this time, at the end of three to five minutes, he can continue talking to his patient. Another thing about this is, guys, we kind of demonstrated this silently, but all the way during the draw, you wanna to talk to your patient. This kind of calms the patient down. You wanna ask them, how are you doing? So where do you live? You live up here locally, you live in Apple Valley. That kind of takes their mind off the actual needle going into the arm and off their fear of maybe prior venipunctures that won't and have not been done properly. At the end of three to five minutes, Al is going to lift up on a corner only of the two by twos all the way up. He's gonna look for stasis, control of bleeding. He's gonna look for mounding of tissue. If there is none, he's gonna put the two by twos back down. He's gonna pick up his coband which is a stretches bandage. And the stretching bandage is going to hold the two by twos in place. He's now going around the two by twos. The two by twos are dressing. The co-band is a bandage. He's gonna secure the two by twos in place using the co-band. And he's gonna ask the patient, how are you doing? If the patient responds fine, he's gonna ask the patient again. He's gonna observe the patient for pallor, paleness, diaphoresis, sweating, for tachypnea, rapid breathing, for any tachycardia, a rapid pulse. If the patient starts making statements like, I feel nauseated, it smells funny in here, is it a little warm today? He's gonna to have the patient put their head down. He is not gonna leave the patient and call for help. 